made it to Lukla. Uh, was a 30-40 minute flight, uh, beautiful surroundings. On the flight were, was me and five other Nepalese tourists. And this was the only flight uh, today. We'll get the trail more or less to ourselves. We're stopping now for some breakfast here in Lukla and then we're gonna continue. Uh, we're gonna go to Fakting. So we're at the gateway, we're leaving Lukla, we're heading off to Fakting. Three hour walk, <laughs> feeling in good spirits. Nice, nice and warm weather. Beautiful skies. It's gonna be a great walk. So we've been walking for about 45 minutes, uh, a little more than three kilometers. We're almost halfway to Fakting. It's really nice and warm. Officially, the temperature is only like eight degrees, but it feels a lot warmer. Passed a lot of small villages and houses along the way, but uh, so far we're only, pretty much only walking downhills. Look like 28.50, and we're going to Fakting, which I believe is uh, 26.50, roughly. Five minutes of walking. We're slowly approaching Fakting. Here's Fakting. So it's the end of day one. Fairly easy trek, mostly downhill. Uh, this is going to be the easiest day of trekking. We're at 2600 meters, which is the lowest we're going to get. This is the warmest it's going to get. Still, I'm sitting here in a fleece and down jacket and it's the sun hasn't even set yet it's going to be a cold two weeks uh, out trekking that's for sure so i don't know if this is uh, the coolest thing i've done or the dumbest thing i've done um, i'll let you know in a couple of days so end of day one so this is day two we're leaving fucking Elevation 2650, moving slowly to Monjo and then Jorsala uh, and then after that steep heavy climb up to Namche Bazaar. In total we're moving up around 800 meters today. Still, it's a gorgeous morning, beautiful weather, cold but not too cold, good day for trekking. So let's go. Just entered uh, Sagarmata National Park, past the city village of Monjo, on our way to Jorsala, and uh, we're gonna have a lunch there before we do the ascent to uh, Namche Bazar, and it's an ascent of about 700 meters. This is the Hillary Suspension Bridge. It's got to be the longest and the highest suspension bridge on the trek. Uh, it's the beginning of our ascent to uh, Namche Bazar. We're now at 29.35 meters, another 500 meters to go. But first, we got to cross this bridge. <laughs>
500 meters of elevation of a path like this. I've only walked for a few minutes. I'm exhausted. So looking forward to getting to Namche. Finally, a long steep climb and uh, we're now at the low point of Namche Bazaar, so very close now. Uh, we're at 3,300 meters, so it's about another 100 meters to go. This was a uh, difficult climb. I actually, the last 100 meters or so, I switched to using trekking poles. It made a big difference. Really looking forward to a rest right now. Um, this was uh, an amazing trek, but uh, quite, quite tiresome. Good morning, welcome to day three. This is the room that I'm staying in. Temperature here, two, three below outside. Uh, inside at the moment, it's uh, a little below six degrees. These water bottles, we put boiling water in yesterday and I used to had them in my uh, sleeping bag, which was really nice. It kept me warm for at least four or five hours. Let's have a look at my view outside. It's pretty spectacular. Today is a day of acclimatizing. Uh, we're gonna try to get used to the altitude, so we're not gonna move further. We're gonna stay in Namche, but we're not gonna stay idle. We're going up to the airport and then continuing up to Everest View. Everest View Hotel is at around 3,880 meters. The idea here is to trek high and sleep low. So now we're up at around 3,800 meters. This is what an easy trek looks like, slightly upwards. Unfortunately, most of the time it doesn't look like this. And we're starting to feel the altitude. The air is thin. It's about 65% the oxygen here at, uh, compared to sea level. But look at this gorgeous view we have from here. You can see the Everest View Hotel up there on the, on the ridge. Lotse and then you have Everest, you have beautiful Amadablam and Nupse we can't see from here. Gorgeous view. Stop for some hot chocolate here at the Everest View Hotel, a little more than 400 meters above Namche. Absolutely gorgeous view. You just sit for hours and stare at this. Not a cloud in the sky. Day four. We're leaving in Namche Bazaar. We're off to Tengboche in the Tengboche Monastery. Now we're walking on this freeway, broad, rather flat surface. Very easy, <laughs> very easy for the next uh, hour or so. And then we're gonna go down and then we gotta go up again. Very frustrating, but that's the way, that's the way it works. That's what trekking is all about. But it's a gorgeous morning, cold in the shadow, nice and warm in the sun and here we are walking on this freeway to Tengboche. Stopped here for an early lunch in uh, Funkitenga. This is the low point of uh, the trek for the next uh, couple of days. We're at 3200. Uh, we're gonna pop past this uh, suspension bridge here. And then we're gonna go up to uh, Tengboche up there, see the monastery. Apparently the lodge is closed there, so we're gonna have to continue on to uh, uh, Pengboche, where we're gonna spend the night. So uh, this is a low point, it's all uphill from here. So this is what we're up against right now. 600 meters. We're more than halfway now. This is better than the slope to Namche Bazaar. It's heavy, but we're, we're getting there. We 
finally made it up the hill, 600 meter incline to uh, Tengbushe Monastery. And this temple, it's one of the oldest uh, temples here in the area. It was built in the 16th century, so it's really old and certainly one of the highest elevated monasteries. Uh, we're going to continue on to Pangboshe, up almost to 4,000 meters. Day five, leaving Pangboshe. Fairly easy two hour trek to Dingboshe, but we're gonna gain another almost 500 meters. Another gorgeous day. Let's do this. <laughs> for the night, Dingboche, 4,440 meters. It's about lunchtime, and here we're gonna stay two nights, so to acclimatize. So it's day six, we're acclimatizing. Now we're just uh, walking up a peak here. Yeah, an observation point. No problem with breathing, really. No headache, no uh, symptoms. Fingers crossed, we're gonna keep it that way. Blue sky. Happy in the face, smile in the face. Yes, <laughs> yes. So we're up at the viewpoint here. Day seven, leaving Dimboche behind, heading up to Loboche. Now we're really going to the Kumbu Glacier, which I'm really looking forward to. It's the first day we actually see some clouds. We're expecting some snow this afternoon as well. It's gonna be quite easy, just slowly uphills here along, along the hills. Now we're at 4,600. We gotta go up there, up to 4,900. Oxygen level here is a little north of 50%, so every step is challenging. So we made it up to the memorial area, memorial for mountaineers that have perished. So we reached Loboje, had lunch in Loboje, uh, decided to continue on to Goraksha. Weather gods are not smiling as much today. Today, as you can see, we have snowfall. It's quite cold and the visibility is quite poor. Pretty good health. Took a uh, Diamox pill earlier this morning. I'm feeling the side effects of that pill. Tingling sensation in uh, my joints. But overall, good health. Breathing is not as difficult as I had thought. So next stop, Gorak ship.
finally made it to Gorakshep. Just a few more steps and we're there. It's snowing, it's windy, it's kind of cold. Long walk today, high elevation, still feeling pretty good. I hope it stays that way. Here's Gorakshep. Day eight, and the day that really matters. Today we are leaving Gorakshep at 5,190 meters. We're going to make an ascent at Kalapatar, 5,643 meters. I'm really looking forward to this. I think it's gonna be a beautiful day. It's very cold. It's probably at least 15 degrees below zero. Let's do this. This is the way. So we're moving in turtle speed up the mountain. Everest, Nupse, and the village of Gorakshep right behind us. We're of course heading this way. Not to this peak we're seeing here, but there's a peak behind that peak. That's where we're going. So we're about halfway to the top at the moment, moving slowly, slowly. Air is very thin, so we're trying to catch our breath and the Kumbu Valley and the Kumbu Glacier right beneath us. So we're really high up now. We can see the peak right behind us. Quick break and then we do the final ascent till we get to the peak of Kalapatar. And the weather is gorgeous. This is it, the top of Kalapatar, 5,643 meters. Oh, this was a heavy ascent. And the view here is just amazing. You see the beautiful Amadablam over there. We see Nupse here. And behind it, you see Lotse, parts of Lotse. And of course, the almighty Everest. Right behind us you see the dust from an avalanche that just happened. So we've just been to the top of Kalapatar. We had the mountain all to ourselves. No winds whatsoever at the peak. Uh, no clouds whatsoever. Now we've had lunch and we're going to continue to Everest Base Camp. On our way back to Loboje, passing Everest Base Camp, sort of. 
this is what we're going through. Somewhere here there's a path. Today is day nine. We're leaving Loboje. Fairly short trek today. We're going to uh, Zongla. village of uh, Zongla. This is kind of the gateway to the Khola Pass. Rooms are extremely cold up at this, this level. This morning when I woke up we had minus eight degrees in the room so everything was frozen including the toilets, including all the faucets, everything. Nothing was working but otherwise things are good. Getting a little bit tired after a long trek. Today was an easy one, just two, two and a half hours from, from Loboche here to, to Zongla. But otherwise we've been trekking for seven, eight hours per day. And it's um, starting to wear me out a little bit. Uh, tomorrow's gonna be another really rough day. One of the roughest so far. So we have to go around those uh, edgy mountains over there to get to Shola Pass and pass 5,400 meters. So that's a 600 meter ascent that we have to do tomorrow morning. Down again, the same amount down to the Gokyo Valley. And we'll see if we go all the way to Gokyo tomorrow. Depends a little bit on how, how strong we are, how strong we feel after the doing the Shola Pass. Day 10. It's a little past five in the morning. It's uh, pitch black outside. We're starting in Zongla. We're gonna do the Shola Pass, which is a rise of about 600 meters. And then we're gonna go down the same amount, continuing to Gokyo. It's uh, minus 10 degrees outside. The reason we're getting up early is uh, it's firstly because we have a long journey ahead. We want to do Shola Pass early. So later on the winds pick up, part of the ice melts, increases the risk of uh, landslides and rocks falling. We made it more than halfway. And we have a beautiful sunrise going on here as well. Look at this. So the next stage here is to climb on top of this uh, glacier here. Looks like a pretty hefty challenge. And keep in mind we are uh, well above 5,000 meters now. and we made it to the top of the Shola Pass. 5,420 meters. This was by far the toughest part of the trek so far. Now we just gotta do uh, the other way. We gotta go down. And I think it's almost equally steep on the other side. Right up there, that's where we came from. That's the peak of the Shola Pass. Looks like a mountain rather than a trail. Now we just had lunch in Tagna and now we're continuing to Gokyo. First we gotta cross this glacier here.
day 11, leaving Gokyo, heading to Namche, so we're on our way back. We're looking at at least seven, eight hours of uh, trekking today. Three days trek in one day. We're doing 24 kilometers today. Day 12, we're leaving Namche Bazaar to Lukla. About five, six hours of trekking. We made it. That's the gateway to Lukla. Everest, Gokyo, I'm back in 12 days. I am so tired. I haven't showered in 12 days. So good to be back. So good to be back. What an amazing experience. We're back. Haha. <laughs> 